Hello FCF, we are on, I believe, day six in our journey, and we're looking at the life of Abraham, who is one of the most important characters in all of Scripture. It's critical that we're familiar with him because God keeps pointing to him as the model of what it means to have a trusting relationship with God himself, the kind of relationship that allows God to give immortality to someone. And so Abraham is a very, very important personage for us. Now we're going to come to a really interesting portion of Scripture today. It's uh, in, in Genesis chapter 17, and I'll just start reading, and you'll pick up the uh, importance of where we're at. Genesis chapter 17, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. So pause here for a minute. Some of you know Abraham started this journey with God, leaving everything behind when he was 75. God promised, I'll make of you, Abraham, a great nation. He's now 99 and still no child. He and Sarah have been together a long time. No children. So you can see that he would be a little bit concerned. So let me read on. I'm going to pick up reading in... Uh, Let's go to verse 15. God also said to Abraham, As for Sar Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai, but you will call her Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Verse 17, this is great. Abraham fell face down and he laughed. And he said to himself, Will his son be born to a man a hundred years old? And will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, uh, If only Ishmael might live before you. But God says, No. Verse 19, uh, Your wife Sarah will bear a son, and you will call him Isaac. Now, this scene gets funny uh, a little later because God comes back uh, and meets with Abraham once again, and again makes this promise that Sarah, your wife, will have a real physical, natural childbirth. And Sarah hears it and laughs. And what's hilarious is when the Lord hears, this is in chapter 18. In fact, I'll, I'll point this verse out because it's kind of funny. Uh, Genesis 18, 12. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. This is an incredible portion of Scripture, folks, because in my opinion, it shows that God has quite a sense of humor himself. Sarah has never been able to have a child. She's now 90 years old. Abraham is close to 100. And when she hears this promise the second time that she's actually going to have a physical son, a natural birth, she laughs. But then when the Lord says, and, and mind you, if you read Genesis 18 on your own, the whole chapter, the Lord shows up with two angels at, at Abram's tent, and Abram literally has them come inside and have a meal together, and that's when the Lord starts making this promise again. So anyway, Sarah, Sarah laughs, and the Lord pins her down and says, You did laugh, and it says that Sarah lied. And the Lord pins her again and says, No, you did laugh. I know you did. I, I think it's, don't, don't, please do not get me wrong. I'm not saying that God ever... Uh, wants us to knowingly lie, or, or, or that, that's not the point of the whole passage. The point is, is that God is gracious and gentle, and I suspect has quite a sense of humor ultimately. Now, here's the interesting thing. Abraham never did doubt, and when you read in Romans chapter 4, as well as in Hebrews chapter 11, about this episode, what you find is this. It says that Abraham was so moved by his trusting God and I'm not trying to be crude here or anything, but he was so moved by his trust in God that even though his physiology had reached a stage where physically he was unable to produce a child, he still did what needed to be done 
trusting that God would give him the power to do what God called him to do. And, and he does it. He and Sarah, they come together as a man and a woman. And sure enough, she gets pregnant and, and has this son whom they, in obedient trust to God, name Isaac. It's, it's quite a story. It really is. And it just shows, once again, this, this beautiful quality of trusting God. When we trust in God, uh, like Abraham, we sometimes are challenged. God will challenge us to trust Him, to empower us. You've got to get this. Abraham was trusting God to empower him to do what he knew he was unable to do. Folks, I, I've been through this cycle so many times in my life. God delights in this. He will ask you and I to do things that you know and I know we cannot do. We don't have what it takes. But if we say, if God calls me to do it, whatever He calls me to do, He'll empower me to do, we will, we will see that it gets done and it builds our trust in God and it builds our spirit of adventure and, and it takes away our fear for the future and it just makes us those that are unstoppable in our service to God. It's quite a story. Uh, I, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Your presence is an open door.